Okay. Hi guys, it's Nina from VR Focus. I'm joined by... David Chu, the uh, founder and uh, chairman of uh, INT Tech. So tell me a little bit about you guys and what you guys do. Well, uh, we, uh, we're doing very, very simple things. We're putting uh, actual pixel density of AM OLED on a piece of a glass so that it, it can enhance the, uh, the effects of a v, uh, VR and AR. You've showcased a lot of things related to pixels. Right. What does this mean for virtual reality and the screen door effect? Can you tell us the difference between our smartphones today and what you guys are developing and how that will render screen door effect as useless? The conventional applications for, uh, for display per se, your view is pretty much limited by your display. However, for the VR and AR, your future will, you're looking forward and projected to a much, much larger area. So your existing uh, smart panels pixel density will be no longer enough in order to satisfy your eye resolution in a, in a spatial way. For instance, um, someone may have told you that for retina, uh, your eyes only need about 326 pixel per inch, uh, there will be no longer enough for the, for the VR per se. Uh, let's say if you have a VR that provides you with a 180 uh, horizontal scan and 125 vertical scan, and then each spatial degree, uh, your eyes uh, will need 60 pixels. Uh, and then you have a display about two inches per se, then you do all the calculations, it's coming back about 2300 PPI. And that is the minimal requirement to get rid of the screen door effect. However, today, we use flat panel uh, display for the VR. Uh, that only gives you about 572. Mm -hmm. So you know that's far away from 2300 PPI. So in order to fully get rid of uh, screen door effect. We, INT, developed we call ultra high pixel density at a minimum 2300 PPI uh, just to get rid of the screen door effect. And our technology, unlike the others based on the silicon wafers, we use the plain old technology, a glass based, and everything built on top of a glass so that the display can be bigger in the future and much cheaper in the future. So let me get this straight. So what you guys are developing will allow um, displays, including virtual reality, to be thinner, uh, larger, yeah. and cheaper. And, and can be flexible as well. And flexible, so I can fold it. Absolutely. So I can fold up a little piece of display, and I can make it into a VR headset. I think that's possible in the future. Yeah. But at least in the near future, is, uh, you no longer have a rigid. You can actually curve it along with your face. What, what does that mean? Can I have a curved display then? Yeah, and, right? and, and then all of a sudden you do not need to do the optical compensation anymore in terms of the calculation because it's flat. Then when you display it, you have to, your algorithm has to compensate the curve, the curve mm -hmm. of the optics. And however, if you have a curved display, then you don't have to do that. Amazing. Then that's reduced uh, the latency as well. Now, 2300 PPI is truly just the beginning. In order to further enhance the performance of VR, the, the next hurdle you'll be facing, we call the back. You know, that, that cause your uh, virginity uh, and um, accommodation differences that cause the dizzy mm -hmm. of your, uh, your brain. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to do that, you have to provide the uh, the, we call very focused. In other, in other words, your eyes has to uh, uh, look at things clear when you're focused, but any others has to be defocused. But today, uh, you don't get it. You get focus everywhere you see. That causes the dizzy, dizziness of your, your brain. Now, to get rid of it, you need to provide even higher pixel density to do so. So that's why we, we just come out with 3,000 PPI, which higher than the 20 to 28 PPI we introduced May this year in the SID. Now we have a 3,000 PPI available. With um, VR headsets, especially here at CES, 
we see a lot of eye tracking, yeah. so a lot of foveated rendering, and indeed, I suppose indeed. that that's really going to enhance indeed. the indeed. immersion that True. we see True. in True. VR. True. For the uh, foveation display, um, it's also a way to reduce the latency because they then uh, the the uh, the chip, the process chip will only process where your eye focus is, and rest it will make it defocus. So you don't have to take so much process time. However, for display, because your eyes see everywhere, so we cannot only have that particular area have a 3,000 PPI. We need to have everywhere 3,000 PPI waiting for your eyes to focus on that particular point. So that's why the 3,000 PPI will be our coming up milestones to meet. With regards to partnerships, are you talking to any VR headset manufacturers who are looking at your technology to integrate it within their headsets? Uh, yes, we do. In fact, um, one thing we found out is uh, being a knowledge-based economy uh, company, we found it's much easier to talk to the brand, the brand names, because brand name doesn't have their stakes on any particular technology. Any technology is good for them, good for their product, they will adopt. So we talked to many uh, big brand names, uh, trying to kind of uh, convince them to test out our uh, demo units. So we do have many active programs ongoing right now, but cannot be specific on the name. Thank right? you so much for your time. Right. Head over to vrfocus.com if you want to find out more, and I will see you in the next video.